Samsung's answer to the iPhone 15 Pro Max is here. The Galaxy S24 Ultra is flatter, pointier, titanium-ier, and AI-ier than ever before. So if you're stopping up a fat stack of your favorite fiat currency for the fanciest flat phone out there, then which one is most worth your cash? I've had a 15 Pro Max since it first launched in late September, and for the past month or so I've been using it alongside the S24 Ultra. So it's time to pick a winner and decide which one is my definitive recommendation out of this pair. I'm Alex Doby, this is XDA TV, let's jump in. As much as Samsung has caught some flack for chasing Apple's titanium bandwagon with the S24, in a lot of ways these are aggressively different products. The wide curved corners that make the relatively large slippery iPhone at least somewhat manageable in one hand make way for much harsher right angle joins in the Galaxy, which are much less easy on the palms. There's an 11 gram weight difference as well going from the iPhone to the Galaxy, and then there's the fact that Samsung just has a larger footprint and thicker proportions. Even by the standards of earlier Ultras, this one really feels like a tank. Even the subtle curves of last year's model are completely gone here. Once again though, Samsung's tip-top model has used its unapologetically enormous chassis to pack in a lot of tech that you won't find in the iPhone. Faster charging, whether wirelessly or over a wire, a bigger battery than Apple's, and an extra rear camera. Plus the perennial party trick that is the S Pen. Apple, on the other hand, has tended to dominate in raw performance from its A-series chips, and done a lot more with a lot less in terms of RAM and battery capacity, allowing the Pro iPhones to punch well above their weight. So moving from iPhone 15 Pro Max to the S24 Ultra, the biggest day-to-day -day hardware upgrade I've noticed is one Samsung has actually glossed over somewhat in its marketing for this phone. This display has Corning's Gorilla Armor, which is significantly less reflective than earlier generations of smartphone glass, even the otherwise brilliant ceramic shield glass of the iPhone. Stick this next to any other smartphone and you can see how reflections just disappear into a black hole on the S24. The idea is it should make it much easier to use in bright direct sunlight because you're not constantly fighting with reflected ambient light. As I said in our OnePlus 12 review, bright direct sunlight is not something you tend to run into in this part of the world in this time of year. But even in overcast conditions or indoors, the difference is clear. And it is so good that I think every flagship smartphone should just have this glass from now on. The new glass also promises to be four times more resistant to micro scratches, which if you've used any phone for long enough, even an iPhone, you'll have been bound to run into. We'll need to check back in on that one though. On the iPhone, the biggest thing I appreciate is the way everything works together. Apple's ecosystem is second to none and only gets exponentially better the more Apple stuff you buy. For me, my weapons of choice have mostly been an Apple Watch and AirTags plus my MacBook. I'm pretty platform agnostic when it comes to which laptop I'm using, but even so, the convenience of AirDrop is a big deal, especially when offloading video to or from the iPhone. Apple's cameras, by the way, still work great for additional bits of B-roll for YouTube videos, so this is a really convenient workflow. Samsung has done a lot to try and catch up to Apple's ecosystem lately, in part with the help of Google and Microsoft. It already has an excellent tracker in the form of the Galaxy Smart Tag, supporting some features even that you won't find on the Apple side, like location history. Meanwhile, the link to Windows app brings many of the conveniences of Apple's continuity over to your Galaxy phone and your Windows PC. And the Galaxy Watch series, powered by Wear OS, are genuinely great smartwatches. With the rest of the Samsung ecosystem though, it's not quite as seamless as it is on the Apple side. The various different parts of the Samsung experience on the phone often feel like they're kind of walled off from each other, requiring a bit of hassle to get the new Samsung service up and running. There just isn't that friction on the iPhone side. The whole it just works thing is a cliche, but there's a reason it exists. We've dug deeper into the software and features of both phones in our One UI 6 and iPhone 15 Pro Max reviews, so check those out for a more comprehensive rundown. But once again, on the Samsung flagship, what I've found myself appreciating is all the different ways in which this phone is a little bit more computer-like. Things like windowed and split-screen multitasking, easily programmable routines, and yes, even Samsung DeX. Although admittedly, I rarely take advantage of this full desktop replacement mode. The iPhone is more content just being a really great phone. The closest you'll get to multi-window is Apple's picture-in-picture -picture feature for videos, and although the built-in shortcuts app can be really powerful for automation, it falls somewhat short of the countless options available in Samsung's modes and routines. 
Where Samsung is hoping to differentiate itself in 2024, however, is with its new Galaxy AI features, roping in generative AI to help out with everything from photo editing to translation. Now, iOS has plenty of decent photo editing features and a great first-party translation app as well, but Galaxy AI takes things a step beyond, with AI expansion for photos, the ability to move around subjects in your shots and replace the vacant space with AI-generated filler. Generally, it works well, and I found it works faster than the equivalent features on the Google Pixel 8. Instant slow-mo is a neat trick as well, and even works on videos not taken on the S24 Ultra. I didn't find it massively practical every day though, and because it uses AI smarts to fill the gaps between the existing frames, it isn't exactly perfect but it is undeniably a very cool party trick and occasionally can come in pretty handy. As for the translation features, they're more of a mixed bag. The Galaxy has its own dedicated interpreter app, which is intended for conversations out in the real world, as well as built-in translations in the phone dialer and text messaging app. The idea is you can respond either by voice or text and your phone does the heavy lifting to translate into one of the other 13 supported languages. While this generally worked well, I sometimes found the interpreter feature got tripped up by context. It was almost like each message was being translated in its own bubble without paying attention to other parts of the conversation that came before it. Classic example here where in Chinese it gets confused about which turkey you're talking about. The translation here is the country, not the bird. In the context of food, it should have been obvious which one we were talking about. So as imperfect as these features are though, I have really appreciated having them at my disposal in my time with the S24 Ultra. Not so much the slightly half-baked translation features, but more the powerful options for photo editing, which otherwise I would have had to fire up Photoshop to be able to use. Software support is another important angle and one where finally Samsung and Apple are pretty closely matched. Samsung guarantees Android OS updates for seven years, and that's actually slightly ahead of the iPhone's current track record. Although Apple doesn't provide a particular support lifespan, the current iOS 17 is supported all the way back to 2018's iPhone XS and XR. So that's around five to six years at present. That said, critical security updates are often rolled out to much older iOS devices. So maybe a tie in this area, I guess, which just goes to show how far Samsung has actually come. So in previous years, it's always been a conclusive win for Apple in terms of benchmarks, especially raw performance. This time around though, it's less clear cut. And if you fire up your benchmarking app of choice on both of these devices, you'll once again find Apple pulling ahead in single core and multi-core performance, but with Samsung taking the win when it comes to graphics and GPU scores. And in those graphically intensive tests, such as 3D Mark, I also found the Galaxy maintained those higher frame rates much better over time, pointing to a superior cooling system in the Samsung phone. Realistically though, these are both going to be great performers for mobile gamers. The Galaxy through its sheer horsepower, and the iPhone just because it's an iPhone and developers have a much smaller number of hardware variables to work with. The same applies to battery life, where both models are easily two-day phones with moderate use, and even with heavy use while traveling, I never felt like either of these was in danger of dying before the end of the day. The iPhone may have a smaller cell on paper, but once again, Apple does more, or rather the same, with less. Something I continue to appreciate on the Samsung side though is the faster charging. In the grand scheme of things, the 45 watt wire charging on offer on the S24 isn't mind-blowingly fast, but on the few occasions where you may find yourself in need of a big top up in a small amount of time, it is really useful. With the iPhone's 25 watt max, you'll find yourself tied to the outlet for a little longer. Apple does at least have MagSafe going for it, which is potentially a big convenience if you've already invested in the necessary cables or docks. Although the Qi 2 technology that MagSafe is based on is now an open standard, it's not supported on the Samsung side just yet. And in fact, if you use a case with MagSafe support, it can actually interfere with the device's S Pen, so be warned. So this year, both Samsung and Apple have had a change of strategy for their flagship cameras. The Galaxy breaks with the past three years of tradition, ditching its unique 10x super telephoto in favor of a 5x zoomer using a larger sensor size. Meanwhile, the iPhone, which had stubbornly stuck with just a 3x shooter, now packs a 5x tetraprism lens that's actually double folded internally. The upside of which is that when it comes to telephoto, these cameras are more similar than you might think, both maxing out at a 5x zoom level and using hybrid zoom to reach beyond that. 
But let's start at the beginning though. With basic photography from the main shooter, neither of these has really changed from their immediate predecessor. Same 200 megapixels in the Galaxy and 48 megapixels from the iPhone. However, Samsung in particular has made some changes to its color science in the S24, meaning that by default, these colors are less punchy and saturated than the equivalent S23. As a result, generally photos from the Galaxy and the iPhone are more similar than ever before, especially in daylight. The biggest difference you'll see here is in temperature with Apple favoring slightly warmer hues. Either way, it's much less immediately obvious whether you're looking at a Samsung or an iPhone photo now, especially when you're looking at the wide or ultra-wide camera. Generally speaking, Samsung has a slightly heavier hand when it comes to noise reduction in scenarios with less ambient light. That means less grain in shots from the Galaxy, but sometimes at the expense of fine detail being scrubbed away. These differences are very situational though, and in general daylight photography with the wide and ultra wide, it can be quite tough to find any meaningful difference between these two cameras. Things get a bit more interesting when you zoom in though, because the Galaxy's 3x lens is still here, giving it a handy stepping stone on the way to 5x that you don't get in the iPhone. Apple's phone is stuck having to use a digital hybrid zoom from 1.1x all the way up to 4.9x. Although Samsung's only using a 10 megapixel sensor for that 3x camera, you will notice a big difference if you go pixel peeping, looking at fine detail and noise, for example, the lines of this statue here. I also find the dedicated 3x is a nice extra option to have for portrait shots. Even in relatively darker conditions like this, the camera system has a bit of extra data to work with, producing a sharper shot on the Galaxy side, especially if you zoom in a little. At a 5x zoom level, it is a fairly even contest, and once again, a lot to do with how much grain and noise is left behind in the shot. Samsung continues to be more aggressive with its noise reduction algorithm, but it also uses a larger sensor than Apple, so there's just less noise to begin with, especially in dimly lit scenes. And that difference in grain only becomes more apparent once you zoom in past five times. See this 10 times shot, for example. Although Apple's 10 times is a little closer than Samsung's, the Galaxy produces a much cleaner shot with much less noticeable noise in the red of the bus here. And the text in these bottle stickers is more legible too, if a little soft. On the iPhone, Apple's algorithm manages to mangle the text just a little bit more. And in this shot at around 20 times, there really is no contest, just a much cleaner shot from the S24 Ultra while retaining the detail of the antenna up top here. The iPhone can hold its own in some daylight situations like the one you see here. Although there is much more noise, the iPhone takes a perfectly fine shot. But in other situations like a long zoom on this Chinese arch, it's clear to see the Galaxy retains more detail and color than the iPhone. In lower light, I notice the same differences in color science applied with slightly cooler hues coming from the Galaxy's camera. The Samsung camera also like to brighten night shots a little more, pulling more detail out of the shadows than the iPhone, which tended to leave these areas looking darker and moodier. The difference here is partly down to personal preference, but I did notice in one or two indoor situations like this ultra wide shot, that the extra imagery that it did pull out of the shadows sometimes just ended up looking a little murky and unpleasant. Now, these characteristics also apply to zoom shots in nighttime conditions, although I will say that the iPhone's night mode does a pretty good job of cleaning up nighttime shots at five times or above, considering how grainy these shots can sometimes appear in daylight photography. So there is surprisingly not all that much in it between these two five times nighttime shots on these devices. As always though, the real test is at 10 times and above. And sure enough, in these kinds of situations, the sheer sensor size and resolution of the Galaxy allows it to pull comfortably ahead. Historically, the iPhone has dominated in video performance versus the Android competition, but that's really been starting to change in recent years. And the S24 Ultra is a great example of how far Android video cameras have come in the past year or so, with smooth stabilization and impressive amount of dynamic range in footage from this phone. In shots like these, using the wide or ultra wide, there is once again very little in it between these two cameras in terms of fine detail, stabilization, or any of the other standard metrics. Even in darker conditions, it's kind of a wash with both phones succumbing to a little jelly effect at a walking pace in footage from the primary camera, and well, a lot of jelly effect when you're using the ultra wide camera at a similar walking pace. What I will say though is that the curse of the iPhone's smaller telephoto sensor strikes yet again in video with the iPhone producing footage that's not only grainier than Samsung's but also has a slightly murky quality to it when shooting at five times or above. Although Samsung's more aggressive noise reduction can smush out some fine details in super telephoto footage, the result is a much more pleasing video as you can see here. Surprisingly, the iPhone's video capabilities at five times in the dark aren't horrible, especially with a relatively static shot. But with movement, as you can see, you quickly enter a situation with more grain than a supermarket cereal aisle. 
not so on the Samsung side, once again thanks to that larger 5x sensor. So we have to pick a winner, and in this case, as much as I enjoy the polish of the iPhone's experience and the effortlessness of Apple's ecosystem, I have to say that I think the S24 Ultra overall is the better phone. Its camera setup has the bonus of an extra 3x camera that's great for portraits, and its larger 5x super telephoto outperforms the iPhones regardless of lighting conditions. Add to that excellent gaming performance, faster charging, and the next-gen reflection-killing glass from Corning, along with the productivity benefits of multitasking and DeX, and for me, it is a narrow but conclusive win for Samsung. But that's just me. Let me know which one you choose down the comments out of this pair. Stick around and subscribe for more comparisons coming soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.